What's going on guys? My name is Muddy Wolf and welcome back to another Unity 2D tutorial. In this one, we are going to be making a top-down uh, shooting mechanic for our game. So as you can see here, I have this player um, in the scene um, and he just has a rigid body. His gravity scale is set to zero. Um, he has a circle collider and a player script with a speed variable we can adjust here and I'll show you that in a second. Uh, and we also have this player graphics, which is actually just the circular graphics in the middle. Um, and let me just show you the player script real quickly. So in Visual Studio Code, there we go, that works. And you can see here we have the player, uh, we have the float here, a rigid body, two different floats, the movement X and the movement Y. Uh, which is actually the input variable, so when we input something, it'll come in, and the mouse position, because we actually rotate our player uh, based on our mouse position. So we're going to get this start, we're going to get start off by getting the rigid body 2D when we start this. We're then going to update, and every single frame we are going to be calling input.getAxis rule horizontal, which is on the keyboard A, D, or the left and right arrows. And for the vertical movement, we're going to get obviously the axis vertical, so that's for the Y movement. We're then going to get the position of the mouse and convert it to the world screen, so a, the, a position inside of the world. And then we're going to get the angle. So this is a little bit of maths. We use a angle in radians whose tan is Y divided by X. I don't know what that means. But we use the tan2 function here, which takes in the mouse Y position minus the current player's position on the Y. And the same for the X. We then times this by math F radian two degrees. Um, and then this, we also minus 90 degrees because we're actually starting our player facing upwards. Um, if we were to start our player facing on the right and have that as the front of our character, then you can mitigate this. But I'm having the top of my player be the front of the player, if that makes sense. Uh, we're then going to get the transform local rotation, apply a, a quaternion Euler of the angle where our current mouse is providing us. And then in our fixed update function, we just apply a velocity based on the X and the Y inputs, normalize it so when we're going diagonally, it's not too fast, and times it by speed. So that's just the basic movement. Now we are going to be adding in the 2D shooting. So let me just show you what the current scene is. If we go in here, we're also going to select this player so you can actually see this rotation. So you can see here, as I move my mouse around, the said rotation is changing. And I can actually move, you can see I can move left, right, up, down, and diagonally. And if I move diagonally, I move the same speed as if I was going up and left and right. And that's due to the, due to the normalization of the player. So now with all that out of the way, let's actually get started on building our game. So in the scene editor view here, we're going to right click here, create a new 2D object, sprite, and a capsule. Now this capsule is going to be called our bullet. Um, and this is a pretty big bullet. We don't need it that big. So let's just say 0 0.2 and 0 0.2. I think that's a good size for a bullet. Let's let's color it a different color. Let's do like uh, F -F -O -F -F -C -E 0, 0 my favorite yellow color apparently. It's what I always use. Uh, and then we're just going to add a circle collide. Not a circle. What is wrong with me? I meant a capsule collider 2D. And there you go. You can see that around our bullet there. We also need a rigid body 2D, and we're going to set this to kinematics. We're only going to be manipulating this via the um, script. Um, so in here, that should be good. We could also freeze the rotation on the set axis because we're going to rotate it. We're actually going to spawn this in facing the way it's shooting, and this will stop it when it hits a wall, turning and firing elsewhere and flying all around the screen. Uh, so there you go. That's just going to fix that issue. We don't need to... Well, it's not also going to... We won't pretend anything. So there you go. That is that. That's that's fine. That's the key man. Let's move that up there like this. Um, and that's fine. But now we actually want it to shoot off. So to do that, we are going to basically add in a new script, call this bullet, and just create and add our bullet script here. And this is going to just import that. Once we've got that, we can double click this to open it up in our Visual Studio Code. Now, I'm just going to reset this and delete all this. I know I could set my template up to do this for me, uh, but I'm kind of lazy. We're going to add this range in, and we're going to say range is from 0 to 10. And this is going to be for a private field uh, called speed. Um, and it's going to be how fast our bullet flies. I'm actually going to set this to 10F. 
straight off the back. So I want them to move quite quickly. Um, and there we go. We're then going to add another range. Uh, again, 1 to 10. Um, and we will call this the lifetime of it. And we'll set this not to 5, probably 2 or 3. We'll start off with 3. Uh, and this is how long the bullet will be alive in the scene. So when you shoot the bullet after 3 seconds have passed, this will then destroy itself um, and the bullet will disappear. So you don't want a bullet forever flying, unless you do. Um, but if you're in a 2D game, you've only got so much screen space. Once it goes off screen, you really want to destroy it. And then we're going to get a rigid body here. We're then going to get a private... Oh, hello, that's capitals. So we're going to get a start method in here. And let's stop using that. Say so RB equal to get components. I'm just going to turn off Copilot. If you're wondering where all these... Um, all these like uh, uh, suggestions are coming from. That is Copilot there. Um, I forgot to turn him off at the start of this video and now he's gone. So he will no longer bug us with code telling me how to code. How I know how to code. Uh, and now we're going to call it destroy. So we're going to get a reference to our rigid body and then we're actually going to call destroy straight away. Now the nice thing about um, destroy is you can actually pass a time to destroy it. So you can call this leave the object in the scene and then destroy it after a certain time. So here we're just going to say game object because um, we want to destroy itself and then we're going to pass through lifetime and this is going to say how many seconds it's alive for and this is free. So there we go, that's now gone. The next thing we want to do is get a, fit, oh, a fixed update method and in here we're going to write rb.velocity is equal to transform.up because we're, our bullet is going to go forward and the top of our bullet is the way we want it to move and then we're going to times that by speed so that is going to make sure our bullet always is flying straight forward and it will never stop until it gets destroyed obviously if you are um, adding in if, if you're adding enemies and obviously when you hit something you want it to be destroyed you can also add a trigger enter um, 2D on this and um, obviously destroy it once it hits something. But for the purpose of this story, we ain't got any enemies. I just want to show you how you can actually shoot your bullets out of the gun. Uh, if you want to see um, a follow-up to this where we actually add an enemy and kill him, let me know and I can show you how to create that script too. Um, so here we go. We've got a fixed update and it's going to move forward. So if we go back to Unity, it will compile the scripts and once that is done, Let's hit play. So we're going to leave this as it is. We're actually going to slow this down to two here because we want this to obviously fly and then I don't want it to go too far. So there you go. You can see it's moving straight. Now, if we rotate this bullet, let's say this way and hit uh, start playing, you're going to see it starts flying off in a different angle, which is perfectly fine. That's exactly what we want because we want it to change. Depend we want to change this C-axis when we spawn it in. So let's set this back to 10 for now. And what we want to do is now create a prefab of our bullet. So we're going to drop this into our project down here. Uh, and there you go. We now have a bullet prefab we can spawn in. So we can delete it from the scene. This, we can now just spawn as many of these in as we want um, at any point. So there we go. Next up, we're going to go back into our player script. So this is where things start getting interesting. Oh, sorry. One thing before that, we need a point to actually shoot from our character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a 2D object sprite square. And this is going to be called our gun. Uh, I'm going to set this down to 0 0.2 and probably 0 0.5 on the set. And we're going to move this all the way up to, let's say, 0 0.5 on the actual Y here to bring it to the top of our player. Um, we're then going to add in a empty game object calling this firing Point. and we're just going to give this uh, say a little red circle and we're going to move this to where we want to spawn the bullet from the gun so when we first spawn the bullet we kind of want it to be at the tip of the gun so i'm going to set it to about 0 0.5 which is roughly the tip where well, it's exactly the tip of the gun as you can see right there which is exactly where we want to spawn our bullet to start shooting from so back on our player let's go back into our player script and we need to start by creating some new variables. So just under here, we're going to call this the bullet variables or gun variables, maybe, because it's a gun we're using. So let's set up serialized field, a private game object, and this is going to be our bullet prefab. So this is going to be the bullet we want to shoot or the bullet we want to spawn in. Oh, I have just clicked away. Uh, and then we're going to say serialized field, uh, 
we want a private transform and this is going to be the firing point of our gun um pretty straightforward there we're then going to get a range of 0.1 f to 1 f and this is going to be the another serialized field which is a private float and this is going to be the fire rate of our gun, 0.5F. Now, we're not going to use this just yet, so I'll just comment this out. We'll, we'll come back to this in a minute. We're going to just make, get our gun actually shooting. So what we want to do is we want to go down into our um, update method. And underneath our transform location, we just want to say if input dot get mouse button down 0. So this is going to be our left mouse button. Um, we then want to call a shoot method. Oh, not a shadow object, a shoot method. Uh, so we need to create this shoot method. Let's do it under our private void here and just create a private void called shoot. Um, and inside of our shoot method, we just want to instantiate the bullet facing the right way. So we want to say instantiate um, a bullet. So let's say bullet prefab firing point dot tra oh, position sorry because this is a transform and then we also want to set the firing point dot rotation as the rotation of the actual bullet when it spawns now once we have both of these this should now shoot our bullet from our gun we just need to set the variables inside the unity editor so let's see what happens here let's click this and wait for this to load so it's asking for the bullet prefab we can just drag and drop that in there and the firing points, so we can grab the firing point from up here and pull it in there. And there we go. So let's hit play and start shooting our gun. So you can see as we rotate fires and as we shoot, the bullets are now firing out in many different ways. And if you wait for a minute, you'll see the bullets will start destroying themselves as they get out of range. Or well, not out of range, as they die after the, the, their lifetime. Uh, and there you go. We can now just continuously, we can rapid fire this as fast as we want. If I just trigger finger it, you can see we can shoot loads of bullets all at once, um, which probably you don't want. You don't, maybe you want to limit the gun. So to do that, we need a firing uh, or a fire rate. So let's add this back in. So we're going to set a firing rate. We're going to set it between 0 and 1. We could probably make it even slow into a 0 0.2 if you're using, let's say, a revolver. Maybe it takes a while to shoot. Uh, and you want to make it a bit slower. So here you go. We've got a firing rate. We're going to set up 0 0.5 to start with. Um, and then going down into our world. Oh, sorry. We actually need another private float here. A uh, private float. And this is going to be the um, fire timer, we're going to call it. And this is basically going to tell us when we can shoot. So let's go down into our, here, uh, into our if statement. And we just want to say if fire timer is less than or equal to zero, or zero float, then we can actually shoot. So what we want to say is fire timer is equal to fire rate. Now, the reason we're calling this is because we want to reset our fire rate. Every time we fire the gun, we then need to reset our timer so it will go back down. We don't want to say else um, fire timer is minus equal to time dot delta time. So this will basically, after 0 0.5 seconds, this will then actually be lower than zero and we will be able to um, shoot our gun again. So there you go. That is how we add it in. Let's go back here and see if it's actually working. Um, so just for the purpose of this, I am going to select our fine rate. I'm going to make it actually one to start. So you can see how slow it is. Let's just hit play. And I'm going to try and trigger finger this right off the bat. You can see, I'm, if you can hit, I don't know if you can hear that, but I am spamming my mouse. Um, and you can see it's only shooting every so often. Now, where we can fix this or make this faster is let's say put this at 0 0.2. And now you can see I can shoot a lot faster, but still not rapid fire. Now, if we put this all the way down to 0.1, we can shoot pretty quickly. But if I spam it, you can see it's still pretty even the actual timings it can shoot. And let's say we're going for two now. You can see how long it takes to actually shoot the gun. It's very good. Now, here's another one. Let's bring it all the way back down to one. If I click and hold, you can see the bullet doesn't shoot. It only shoots once I click it. But what happens if we want to have like a machine gun? where you can just hold the bullet and it will shoot really fast. Well, let me show you how to do that. So back in our script here, 
uh, back of our gun fair boys. We're gonna go down. Sorry, we're gonna go back to our if statement. We're gonna change this from get mouse down to just get mouse button. What this does is check whether the mouse button is held down. So what we want to do is go back into Unity, and now this is going to allow us to basically rapid fire our gun. So I'm going to set this to about, let's say 0 0.2 here on this one, and let's hit play. So now if we go into the game and I click, you can if I click, you can see it still shoots, but if I hold the mouse button, you can see it rapid fires the actual bullet. So you can see there, and if we put this all the way down and I hold it, you can see it will shoot as quick as it possibly can, um, and you can rapid fire this the whole way around. There you go. We can move around and shoot, of course, as well. Um, so you can see here, we're actually moving and shooting, um, and there you go. So you can rapid fire your bullets everywhere, and they will delete. And that is how you make a simple 2D shooting, top-down shooting mechanic inside of Unity. Uh, so if you do want to see the actual hitting the player and it destroy the bullets destroying on impact, uh, let me know. We can actually do a tutorial now. We can even add in the particle system if you want to see an impact. So when a bullet hits a wall, a particle system spawns and like disperses a bullet. So it looks like a bullet hits a wall and sparks come out. We can do a bunch of different things with that. You let me know what you want to see down below in the comments, guys. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and leave a comment, any comment you want. Just, you know, put banana or whatever you want in the comments. That's, that's up to you. Um, but don't forget, if you get stuck or you need some help, feel free to hop into my Discord server. The link should be down below. If it's not, shout at me in the comments. Um, and join the Discord server, ask for help. We have a dedicated forum help channel for different things like web development and game development and whatnot. Just throw it in there, tag it as game development, and someone should be able to help you. If I'm around, I'll help you myself. But for now, guys, thank you for watching this video. It's been a long time. I haven't made a game dev tutorial in a, almost a year, 255 days. That's a long time. But anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.